Tigers and the Toronto Blue Jays in the middle game in this three game series. Tigers won the opener last night and we remind you tonight if the Tigers combine for three or more home runs bring a copy of the box score to a participating Arby's location tomorrow and get a free small order of curly fries. Well, the Tigers dressed in the home whites here tonight taking the field here at Comerica Park and another beautiful night for baseball here in the Motor City. Here is the starting lineup for the visiting Toronto Blue Jays. It is presented by the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Rajay Davis leads off in left. Colby Rasmus in center. Edwin Encarnacion the D.H. Escobar I should say Cooper rather at first followed by Sierra and Tori Alba. Kelly Johnson is at second base McCoy and Echeverria playing for Escobar who is on the paternity list. So this Blue Jays team already missing a lot of players. Now the shortstop is gone. Meanwhile it'll be Anibal Sanchez on the hill for the Detroit Tigers brought to you by Soaring Eagle Casino. Well expect a much more aggressive uh, Sanchez in the game today. He will throw some fastballs inside and hopefully that will get some swings and misses on his breaking balls. He's had very little margin for air. And they did not score a lot of runs for him when he was in Miami and the Tigers haven't scored many runs for him when he's been on the mound for them. Beaumont Health System will sponsor the Tigers defensive alignment here tonight just as it does every single night. You've got Baker in right Jackson in center Andy Dirks is in left Cabrera Peralta Infante in fielder. That's the everyday infield. They're back out there and Alex Avila. Uh, he's behind the plate. Anibal Sanchez was backed off his last start and of course he spent some time with Jeff Jones the pitching coach and Jones talks about what they work with with Mr. Sanchez. Really what we focused on is keeping the ball down. He's he's gotten hurt with pitches up out over the plate and in the bullpen sessions and the video sessions we've looked at that. We've talked about getting making sure he gets enough turn with his body which will help keep him over the rubber. Very important for him to work down but every now and then you do need to change the eye level and go up in the strike zone and you can get some swings and misses up there too at 95 miles an hour but you have to set up those pitches. So we are ready for baseball here this evening. Davis will step in. He'll be followed by Rasmus and then Encarnacion. Tigers trying to make it two straight wins over the Jays. And here's the first pitch of tonight's ball game. It's a little bit high. One ball and no strikes on Rajay Davis. He's batting 256. He's hit six home runs this year. And Davis shoots one on the ground to second base right at Infante. Still has time to get him by half a step. Davis out of there one gone with Davis running down the line if you do boot it you can't panic and Omar didn't panic uh, he was able to reach down with the bare hand and then still get a firm throw over the fielder to get to speedy uh, Rajay Davis he'll bring up Colby Rasmus with one out Jim Leland was just talking the other day about how one of the things he admires the way Infante plays second base is that he does not panic and that was another great example. Rasmus looks at a strike going one. Rasmus looks like a rock star tonight. <laughs> yes, he does. Got the flowing locks. He's got the shades going. Little chain around the neck. Mr. T starter kit. There's a ball outside. One ball, one strike. Well, Rasmus trying anything to bust out of a slump. He is old for his last 22. Had a walk in the ball game last night. Finished 0 for 4. And he fouls it straight back. One ball, two strikes. Was commenting on Rasmus last night and how quick his hands are. Tremendous bat speed. Stands right on top of the plate and does not stand very deep in batter's box. He is three for 11 against Sanchez's career. And one of those hits a home run. As a matter of fact, it looks like to me that when he does take his stride and the front foot gets down and he swings and makes contact. That front foot looks like it may even be out of the batter's box. Fouled it straight back. Very talented young player, Colby Rasmus. Every time he takes a swing, he just kicks that chalk and kind of gets it out of the way. And his foot is out of the batter's box. By a pretty good margin. A little bit outside. Two balls, two strikes. Rasmus used to be with the St. Louis Cardinals. 
It was not a good situation there. He was dealt over to the Toronto Blue Jays. Swing and a miss, and Sanchez strikes him out. Two gone. First strike out of the night for Anibal. When you're aggressive with your fastball, as he was at the beginning of the pitch sequence there to Colby Rasmus, then all of a sudden you get the hitter looking for that fastball late in the count, and you can get away with the breaking ball and the changeup down if you locate it in. That was a pretty good pitch there by Sanchez. And it'll bring up Edwin Encarnacion, who last night homered in the ball game, was two out of five. And he looks at ball one inside. Encarnacion also made the final out of the game last night with two men on, two men out. He struck out. That's in there, one and one. He's got one thing on his mind, and that's to try to round the base pass, which he's done 32 times this year. What a year it's been for Edwin. He will appeal and say that he went. Encarnacion's previous home run high was 26, so he's well beyond that with 32. Here's the one two. That'll get back out of play. Laid on the fastball. One and two. The count remains on Encarnacion. He also leads his ball club in walks with 61 this season. Ball high. Two balls, two strikes. That's a good pitch there. It's a purpose pitch that we'll see what Sanchez comes back with now. Uh, after the fastball up, he's already gone in with the fastball. He's gone inside with the changeup uh, on one of his pitches, too. Going with the changeup. Lifted in the air, left field. Andy Dirks backing up, staring in the sunlight. And a 1 2 3 first inning for Honeywell Sanchez. Good start. The bottom of the first inning, Tigers starting lineup tonight, presented by Big Boy. Jackson at the top, then Infante at second, Cabrera at third, Prince at first base, Johnny Peralta the shortstop, Delman Young right now a seven-game hitting streak. He is the DH, Dirks, Baker, and Avila, the bottom three tonight for Detroit. Starting pitcher for the Blue Jays is Aaron Laffey. And he is presented by Bill Fox Chevrolet of Rochester. And for Laffey to be very successful here tonight against this Tigers offense, he's got to be on point with his control. And he's got to keep the fastball south of the knees. He's got to work in and out. And he's got to get himself in some good breaking ball counts where he can expand uh, the strike zone because he's not overpowering at all. And so Laffey facing Jackson to start things off. The Tiger first inning, strike one on Austin. Jackson, three out of five last night, had a double. To go with a couple of singles. Whenever the Blue Jays show up, uh, AJ's getting two, three knots a day. He's worn out Toronto pitching in his big league career. That's in there for a strike. 
0 and 2 the count. Jackson has seven hits on this homestand. Laffy with the 0-2. Way high. One ball, two strikes. I was very impressed with Jackson's night last night. He got a base hit his first time up off Romero. It was a changeup that he rolled over. And Vizcale made an error, but Jackson got an infield single. And then he made an adjustment the next two times up and hit the ball the opposite way for a single and a double. Down he goes on strikes as Laffy picks up his first strikeout. Take a look at the defensive alignment uh, this evening for the Toronto Blue Jays presented by Tim Hortons. You've got Sierra, Rasmus, Davis in the outfield. You've got McCoy, Echeverria at shortstop. Kelly Johnson at second. David Cooper uh, back at first base. And Jorvit, Tori Alba making his first start for the Toronto Blue Jays. Tori Alba let go earlier this year by Texas and so now wearing Toronto colors. A ball to Omar Infante. He brought that uh, fancy nail polish with him from uh, Texas. I see. They made the trip apparently, making another fashion statement. Infante one out of four last night. Knocked in a couple of runs. He looks at a strike one one. Looks like it has a little bit of a yellow tint to it. I saw that. There's a strike in the outer edge. One, two. And Fonte with 13 RBIs in a Detroit uniform. Here's the one, two coming home. Grounded toward third. Sharply hit to McCoy and he'll throw him out. That's a dangerous pitch right there for Laffey. Uh, Tori Alba wanted the ball inside and Laffy didn't get it in far enough. Omar real good fastball hitter drilled that ball right to the third baseman. If Laffy doesn't get that fastball inside a few of these Tigers. Uh, might hit one in the gap or a few in the gap here today. Two up two down that'll bring up Miguel Cabrera. He was held hitless last night 0 for 4 but he did pick up an RBI. Ball one missing away. Another perfect evening tonight here in Detroit 78 degrees our game time temperature this evening. Clear skies. And another big crowd. 1 0 is a strike on the outer edge 1 1. Tom Halley in the home plate umpire this evening. Cabrera has faced Laffey 10 times. He's two for 10 career against him. 27 year old Laffey out of Cumberland, Maryland. Here's the 1 1. Two balls, one strike. Laffey was signed by the Blue Jays as a free agent in December this past offseason. And he has seen a lot of uh, action against the Tigers, mostly with the Cleveland Indians. There's a bouncing ball left side. McCoy in the short hop. Nicely done. And his throw is in time to retire the side. Tigers go one, two, three. We go to the second.
Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank. Strength and stability since 1849. Ram now get a great deal on a new Ram truck at the Ram Summer Clearance event going on right now. And by Kraft, make something amazing. Back here at the ballpark as the Tigers and the Jays go at it tonight in game two in this series. Scoreless so far. David Cooper is leading things off for Toronto. Cooper, Sierra, and then Tori Alba. Big night last night for Cooper. He had three hits in the game. And batting 297 overall. That one floats outside. Two balls, one strike. And I know we've only seen him a little bit, Rod, but he looked pretty impressive last night with the bat. He's got a nice little short, quick, compact swing, likes to drive the ball the other way. He won a batting title uh, last year in Triple A. Had a great year. Had 51 doubles. Hit 364. I would say that qualifies as a great year. There's a bouncing ball right side. Fielder on the backhand. Sanchez will cover and one gone. By the way, this game tonight is available in high definition on Fox Sports Detroit HD, sponsored by Xfinity from Comcast. Four up, four down against Sanchez. Here is Moises Sierra. First pitch in for a strike, 0 and 1. Sierra pinch hit in the ball game last night and singled. A couple of homers this year. The 0 1 pitch is lifted toward left field on a line that's going to get down and go to the wall. Extra bases for Sierra, and he will pull in with a stand up double. First hit of the ball game for Toronto. It's a 78 mile per hour breaking ball that's not located where he wants it. This ball is up and it's over the heart of the plate and drilled by Sierra uh, to left field. One out scoring chance for the Blue Jays. Here is your Vit Torrealba. I mentioned earlier he was designated for assignment by the Texas Rangers. Played in 49 games with the Rangers. And that is low, 1 0. Torrealba signed on the 16th of this month, not too long ago. J.P. Aaron Sebia is on the disabled list. One of many Blue Jay starters on the DL. Sanchez missed again and the count goes 2-0. It's been a long year in terms of injuries. And a tough season. John Farrell in his second year as the Jay skipper. Here's the 2-0. Three balls, no strikes. Farrell last night had to watch perhaps his best young pitcher in Ricky Romero struggle with his command. Eight walks. Don't really see that all that often. But the Tigers were able to take advantage of enough of those walks. That has uh, been Romero's issue pretty much all year. Runner going. And it's fouled back out of play. Sierra breaking for third base will have to go back. Well, the Blue Jays, they steal a lot of bases as a team. And, but you didn't expect him to be running there, not on a 3 0 pitch, not from second base. Caught me by surprise. Here's the uh, Jimmy Johns leaderboard in terms of stolen bases. The Blue Jays, second only to Tampa. That Tampa Bay pitching staff, their starters have gone about a calendar month with an ERA under two. Mm. Yeah, they're awfully good. Oh, he went around. He discarded the bat, was about three quarters of the way to the bag, and now Torre Alba is going to have to go back. Alfonso Marquez said he went around. Pretty close. So it's three and two. Sanchez giving up a double here to Sierra. 
One out in the second with no score. And that one is way outside. So it ends up being a walk anyway. Two on one out. There's Kelly Johnson. Blue Jays already have seen Anibal Sanchez three times once when he was with Miami and of course once with the Tigers. He hasn't done very well against them. Sanchez first start with Detroit was in Toronto back on July the 28th. As Johnson looks at a strike. And in that game he gave up five runs in six innings. Sanchez up to 29 pitches so far. Johnson batting 229 struck out a couple of times last night. Little pop up. Shallow center field for Jackson. Two gone. Here's that list of uh, big time names on their disabled list. Bautista. Uh, that's a big one anytime you take an offensive weapon like that uh, out of your starting lineup. Drabic, Morrow out of the pitching staff. Here's Mike McCoy. He'll try and deliver a two out hit. McCoy batting just 208. That's in for strike one. Sierra at second, Tori Alba at first. One and one. Tigers with their win last night have won 18 of their last 23 at home. Trying to take advantage of the rest of this home stand. They have the Angels coming in next. That's a strike on the inside part of the plate, one and two. Is in his second stint with the big club this year. Checked it. Did he go? Negative. Alfonso Marquez had an easy call that time, it appeared. Sanchez is much more aggressive here tonight with his fastball. Uh, we were told as much uh, that he would come out and establish that pitch very early uh, in the game. So it's two and two. Now run it full at three and two, which means the runners will be getting a head start with two outs. Sanchez had an easy one, two, three first. He has allowed a double and a walk here in the second. Little chopper back up the middle. Infante charging. The throw is in time. And that is that for Toronto. No runs, a double, and a walk. And the Prince will lead off when we get to the bottom of the second.
Laura Infante coming in very patient with the base runner, Tori Alba, uh, running from first. He just simply did not let him distract him. He let him pass by and simply flipped off balance to get McCoy running down the line. And it got him by half a step. And I like the fact that Prince finished that play. He wasn't sure whether McCoy would have been called out or not, but he still finished the play and threw the ball home to Alex uh, because Sierra, who was on second base, never stopped at third. Fielder leads it off and skies one in the air to left, not deep at all. Rajay Davis coming in toward the line. He run it down. One pitch, one out, four straight, retired by Laffey. Laffey usually is pretty good first time through the batting order. He holds the opposition to a 189 batting average, but the second time and throughout the game, the batting average goes up over 300. So uh, him getting off to good starts is nothing new. Well, here is Peralta, who went hitless in last night's game. Johnny now at 259. First pitch is outside from Laffey. Laffey last year pitched out of the bullpen for both Seattle and the New York Yankees. He was waived twice last season and has found a landing spot in Toronto. 2 0 the count. Saw a lot of Laffey with the Cleveland Indians, originally drafted by Cleveland back in 03. That's where I crossed paths initially with. Uh, John Farrell, uh, the manager of the Toronto Blue Jays. And uh, John Farrell pretty much used to run that minor league system in Cleveland. Bouncing ball left side of the infield. Echeverria goes high, but he kept his foot on the bag. Two gone. And that'll bring up Delman Young. Five straight retired by the Toronto lefty. So Young, who last night was two for three with an RBI, stands in. And Delman now is hit safely in seven consecutive games. And it's in for strike one. He's had 18 at bats against Lafty, 278 with a home run career against him. The 0 1. Young trying to get something started here with two outs, nobody on in the second. Jays have the game's only hit so far. And Delman fouls it back out of play. One ball and two strikes on Young. Five hits on the homestand for Delman. The 1 2 offering. Ground ball right side. Ranging left is Kelly Johnson. And it's going to be an easy 1 2 3 inning for Laffey. You're watching Tigers baseball tonight, presented by Bell Tire.
be scoreless contest here tonight. Donnie Bal Sanchez back to the hill. No runs, one hit for the Jays. No runs, no hits for Detroit. And Sanchez will face Echeverria, Davis, and Rasmus, 9 1 and 2 in the Blue Jays lineup. A Danny Echeverria batting in the nine slot and playing short tonight for Yonel Escobar, who's on the paternity list, so he is out of action for the Blue Jays. Echeverria fouls it off, and the count's 0 and 2 now. Echeverria was having a real nice year in Las Vegas. Not a whole lot of power, but he had driven in 63 runs. Considered perhaps the shortstop of the future for the Blue Jays. And they say he can really pick it, and he's got a real good arm. One and two to count. A native of Cuba. Echeverria waiting on a one two. And he hits one off the end of the bat. Sounded like a broken bat as well. And Sanchez throws him out. One gone while we have a chance. Back to the studio we go now for a game break. Here's Trevor Thompson. All right, Trev, thank you. You know, when uh, UNS Cespedes was signed by the A's, everybody was thinking, what for? Well, he's been an awfully good piece for them right now in a pennant stretch. We did not uh, get a chance to see him when we made our trip out west. Uh, he was injured at that time. But he's got a lot of power. He's got some speed, got a good throwing arm. A lot of usable tools at this level. One ball, one strike on Rajay Davis, who bounced out to start the game. Here's the 1-1. One, one. They want the appeal. They finally get it. And down there at first base, Alfonso Marquez has been busy. It's the third appeal already in this game. Here's the 2-1. To right field and hit well. But Baker is there, and there are two gone now. Well, speaking of the athletics, don't know if you heard today, but Bartolo Canone was hit for 50 games testing positive for testosterone. And so he joins a list that includes Guillermo Moda, Freddie Galvis, Marlon Byrd, and of course, most recently, Melky Cabrera. And Cologne Rod was having a decent year for them. He sure was. Uh, they are most definitely going to miss him, as is uh, the Giants are going to miss Cabrera. Will be Rasmus. It's a slow ground ball to second, and Fonte will charge it. And an easy one, two, three inning for Anibal Sanchez.
2010. Joyce was the first base umpire. He missed that call, costing Armando Galarraga a perfect game, and that was probably the lowest point of Jim Joyce's professional career. But we learned yesterday Jim Joyce administered P CPR to a Diamondbacks game employee and actually saved her life yesterday and uh, quite an amazing story coming out of Arizona. It is. It is. Jim Joyce, great man. Uh, he is a really good umpire and a tremendous individual. The employee was named Jane Powers and uh, she had collapsed in a tunnel leading the umpire's room in Arizona. Jim Joyce applied CPR and saved her life. So he was at the right place at the right time. He was and he had the right training. Well, good for Jim Joyce. Here it is a scoreless game as we go to the bottom of the third and it'll be Andy Dirks to lead things off. Dirks and then Baker and then Avila facing the lefty Aaron Laffey. Check swing inside one ball one strike. Six up six down so far against Laffey. Andy has hit safely in his last three and really since coming off the disabled list has been swinging a hot bat. Looks at one outside two and one. Tigers of course are facing. Five consecutive left handed pitchers so. With a good portion of their outfielders left handed. And Jim Leland really has only been able to employ Baker. In these games but Barry Bosch Dirks all left handed. There's a check swing outside. They want the appeal and he didn't go. Well, Dirks with a 332 batting average pretty much has earned all the reps uh, that he's getting these days. 356 against righties, 237 against lefties. There's C3 1. And it's ball four. Leadoff man is on. The Tigers will conclude a three game series with the Angels this Sunday at 105. All kids 14 and under receive a Tigers back to school lunch bag. Call 866 66 Tiger or visit tigers.com. That'll bring up Jeff Baker. Oh, for two in last night's game. And Baker will stand in there with the Tigers' first base runner of the game. It's Dirks at first. And there is a strike call. 0 and 1 on Baker. One sixty seven with the Tigers. Baker came over from the Chicago Cubs. He has seen Laffey a couple of times. He's two for three against him. With a double and a homer. So on the surface, this is a good matchup for Detroit. Dirk's modest lead at first base. Neither team has scored yet. We're in the bottom of the third. Here's the 0 1. Shattered bat rolled back to the pitcher. There's one relay on the way from Echevarria is a double play. Nifty footwork there by Echevarria. And we've heard as much about him, his athleticism, his throwing arm, because Andy Dirks is right on top of him. And take a look at Echevarria. Uh, just gets out of the way of Dirks and able to complete the play with a very strong, strong throwing arm. Not really a perfect feed, but he had the footwork to stay with it. And the base is empty now for Alex Avila. First time this year uh, that Avila has batted ninth uh, for the Tigers. Uh, he has hit uh, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Uh, but first time batting down at the bottom of the batting order. Tigers continue to hit into a ton of double plays 120 now which is the most in the American League. They hit into six alone in that series against the Orioles and a few of them were in critical key spots. The Orioles went on to win two out of three in that series. 
Ricky Romero's line would have been a lot uglier uh, in last night's game had he not been able to throw a few ground ball double plays when he was in there. Swing and a miss. Second pitcher in the last 20 years to walk eight batters and record zero strikeouts. Old Greg Reynolds did it back in 2008 for Colorado. The one two swing and a miss. Avila goes down and the Tigers like that are out of the third on our way to the fourth. No score. Sports Detroit is brought to you by Arby's. Play Arby's new Snap and Rock promotion. Snap a picture of your cup. Send and win. And by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. Well, when you come to the ballpark, you're always reminded of the greatest voice of the Detroit Tigers, Ernie Harwell. He's immortalized with a statue here at the ballpark. Photograph worthy without question. Here come the Blue Jays down as we go to the fourth. And Anibal Sanchez back to work delivers a strike. Edwin Encarnacion leads it off. And David Cooper and Moises Sierra. That's another strike call. The count is 0 2. And he's given time as Sanchez started his windup. That's a really late time given by Tom Halley. That's in the air. Shallow right. Baker coming in. And Carnacion is out, one gone. And so far, so good for Hannibal Sanchez. What do you think tonight after the first? Three and a third, right? Well, he's keeping the ball out of the middle of the plate, and he's done a very nice job against Encarnacion. His first time up, he moved the ball all around the strike zone. He got him to fly out harmlessly, and then that second time up, three pitches, three different pitches, and he got him to pop up again. Here's Cooper. He looks at a ball, though. Bounce out his first time up. That's rifle down the right field line. Looks like trouble, and it's off the wall. Might hold him to a single here, and they will. He fell down. Now the throw behind him. Save. He just got back in. Cooper lost his footing on the wide turn. Cooper has hit everything in the two-game series here at Comerica Park. That ball absolutely laced off the gate, but played perfectly by Baker. He gets the ball to Infante, and then when Bacon, when he tried to put on the brakes, Cooper 
Uh, he slipped and fell, and he almost was tagged out by Prince. Yeah, it looked close. So it's a one out single. Here is Sierra. He drives one of the air to left field. Dirk's going back to the track to the wall. Leaps and makes the catch. Cooper scampers back to first, and the ball hit deep by Sierra. Andy Dirks calls it in. Don't know a whole lot about Sierra, but he is really swinging that stick. A couple balls he's hit hard. Great concentration by Dirks. Gets back and makes a real nice play. A couple of hard hit balls in this inning for Toronto. Here's your Vit Torrealba. Take a rip and straight back of the screen. It goes 0-1. The Blue Jays are a very good fastball hitting team, and they've already recognized now, second time through the batting order, that Sanchez is throwing lots of fastballs. So you're seeing some guys very aggressive on the first pitches. Now it's up to Sanchez to start to mix it up a little bit more to keep him off the fastball. Now after a breaking ball, if you want to go back with a well-located fastball, you can do so. Dwayne Murphy, their hitting coach, was a real good fastball hitter himself when he played in the major leagues. Most of his time came with the Oakland Athletics. Bouncing ball back up the middle. Peralta ranging left to flip the second for the force. And that is that for Toronto. No runs, one hit. Dirks all the way back to the wall to make a nice play. Before the game tonight, uh, there was a robot that some uh, students created here, throwing out one of the first pitches. Pause made the play on that one. How about the uh, real impressive one, though? Jordan Weaver, the Olympian gymnast, threw out uh, the ceremonial first pitch as well. Weaver Fever here at the ballpark. And she did well considering she has a stress fracture. Well, she did so well that uh, G Money got her autograph. <laughs> it's usually the other way around. It sure is. <laughs> Leave it to G Money. But Jordan was the one signing first. So here come the Tigers now as we go to the bottom of the fourth. And Laffey back to the hill. He is facing the top of the lineup, Austin Jackson. Jackson and Fonte Cabrera. And then it's rolled foul, third base side. And here's where Laffey has run into trouble uh, this year, second time through the batting order. Uh, the batting average goes from 189 all the way up to 315. And we'll see if the Tigers have made some adjustments here against Aaron. That is a foul ball down the right field line. 
Here's the Mazda scouting report. Austin Jackson's career against the Blue Jays. Well, as you mentioned earlier, his eyes light up whenever the Blue Jays are in town. Yeah, he gets busy against them. And 394 with eight extra base hits. And he's driven in seven. Here's the 0 2. Grounded foul. Jackson struck out of the first. Tigers still searching for their first hit as we play here in the fourth. And Fonte waiting on deck. Little bouncing ball toward third, charging is McCoy. And dug out at first base. One out. Left side of that uh, Toronto Blue Jays infield's been busy today, uh, which is usually the case when you go up against a left hander that's not overpowering. And Laffy, for the most part, has kept his fastballs and breaking balls away from the right handed hitters, and some of the guys have rolled over to either third or shortstop. Here's Infante, he's 0 for 1. Omar looks at a ball high and away. One of the things that Laffey said that he did toward the end of spring training, he worked with Bruce Walton, their pitching coach, and also Pete Walker, their bullpen coach, on adding a cutter. And apparently it was a pitch that he was able to grasp very quickly, and it's been a good pitch against right handed hitters. That's in there, one ball, one strike. So I guess it just goes to show, it doesn't matter how long you've been around, uh, you're always trying to add some things and get better and better. I and mean, whatever you could do to miss some bats, keep guys off balance. Two balls, one strike. That seems to be the uh, the new pitch these days. A lot of guys are throwing a lot more cut fastballs. Last year, the righties were hitting 358 against them. This year, 274. The 2 1. That'll get back out of play. 2 2. Now, if everybody could throw Mariano Rivera's cut fastball, <laughs> they'd all be really good. And they'd all be headed to the Hall of Fame. Two balls, two strikes on Omar Infante. One gone here in the fourth. Driven toward left center field and hit well. That ball is going to shoot the gap and go to the warning track. Infante hits the back at second. Here he comes to third. The throw is not in time. Triple for Omar. Toriapo wanted the breaking ball down. You can see where the glove is, but Laffey does not get on top of it. He leaves it up, and the ball is whistled uh, in the left center field. And Davis doesn't come up with it cleanly. Omar and Fonte, once he got to second base, he determined on his own whether he could get to third base or not. Uh, he was not looking at Gene Lamont to tell him whether he could do it or not, and it was a bang bang play over at third. And the Tigers finally get their first hit, fourth triple of the year for Infante. The infield coming in now for Toronto. And as Miguel Cabrera stands in, and he fouls it back out of play. Cabrera bounced out his first time up. Cabrera right now with 105 RBIs, tops in the American League. Fouled off. 0 and 2. Here's that list of leaders in the AL. Hamilton 102. Brent's out there as well. He is fourth with 88. Infante has just tripled with one out.
Grounded foul. Right back for the Tiger dugout. 0-2. The count stays on Miguel Cabrera. Cabrera is also third in the league with 82 runs scored. It's going to be fun to see how he finishes this year, how Mike Trout finishes. Trout and the Angels coming to town next. Those are the two guys right now that are being talked about in terms of MVP in the AL. That'll get away from Toriaba. Not deep enough though to score the run. And Fonte thought about it. One and two. It's an 88 mile per hour cut fastball that somehow Otori Alba able to get down and get glove on it. And then you see Cabrera put his hand up toward Infante telling him, no, you stay there. I'll drive you in. Laffey missed inside two balls two strikes and the majority of the pitches that Laffey has thrown to Miggy today have been inside whether they be the breaking balls or the fastballs but that's where you have to pitch McGill and you have to try to tie him up if you try to sneak something on the outside part of the plate that's when Cabrera would do damage you see just about every pitch inside to Miggy most of them off the plate That'll get to the backstop and that'll score the run. Laffey bounces in another one to the backstop that goes in a wild pitch makes it one nothing Detroit. It looks like uh, Laffey overthrew the changeup and threw it right down in the dirt. Could get no help uh, whatsoever from his catcher Tori Alba and Omar Infante able to scan for home. Wow. Oh my goodness. That almost hit grass. Here's the 3-2. Driven back out of play. So Anibal Sanchez now has his first run of the game to work with. Tigers get their first hit in this inning and they've cashed in. The Infante triple. Way outside, and Cabrera gets a walk. Hey, fans, this week on Fox Saturday Baseball, the playoff push continues as Joe Maurer and the Twins head to Arlington to take on the AL West leading Rangers, or the Cardinals battle the NL Central leading Cincinnati Reds. Fox Saturday Baseball begins at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, only on Fox. Check local listings for the game and start time in your area. So Laffey got ahead of Cabrera 0 and 2 and then walks him and now here is Prince Fielder. They are shifting defensively for Prince. Echevarria the shortstop is just about behind the bag at second. Meanwhile 48 now thrown by Laffey. 49 pitches thrown by Laffey. Here's the 1 0. Bouncing ball back towards second on the backhand there. Johnson flips to Echeverria and they'll get the double play. 4 6 3. Tigers into another twin killing.
Fifth inning now here at the ballpark. It is time for the Ace Hardware Scott's fan poll question of the game. Besides the Tigers, which of these current wild card teams would you like to see advance to the playoffs? The Rays, the Orioles, the A's, or the Angels? You can enter your vote by texting Ace, followed by a space, the letter answer to 37338. I'm going with A. Rays? I don't want to see the Rays. Not that pitching staff. Tampa 69 and 55 as you look at the wild card standings Baltimore still in there swing and a miss by Kelly Johnson and again the Oakland at 67 and 56 Tigers right now a game and a half out of the wild card any of those teams scare you I've got to agree with you I mean I think in the postseason you run into a team that is pitching extremely well and a short series can be over quickly. So yes they would scare me and uh, it seems like they're clicking on all cylinders at the right time of the year and some of those teams are probably saying the exact same thing about the Tigers they don't want to see Verlander they don't want to see Scherzer uh, the way that he is pitching either in a short series 2 2 is lifted in the air toward left Andy Dirks under it a more routine play for Andy one gone yeah I would think so. I mean, you got to believe you face Verlander, and you're looking at going down 0-1, and then you got Scherzer throwing 98, 99 with that slider. And Scherzer is pitching some of the best baseball we've ever you know, seen him pitch. Stuff last night was incredible. Upper 90s fastball, good separation, and speed differential between the fastball and the breaking ball and the changeup. Mike McCoy, strike one. And meanwhile, you know, Sanchez, whatever adjustment they made, whether it be the hip turn, uh, which is allowing him to get on top of the baseball and get it down, or being more aggressive with his fastballs, pitches like that he's able to get away with, and it's located beautifully at the bottom of the zone. 61 thrown by Sanchez. I didn't notice him to be working as quickly as he's working here tonight either. In his first four starts in a Tigers uniform. Seems like he has picked up the pace a little bit. He's on a mission. One and two on McCoy. That'll get foul back out of play. Well, you got to believe on it, just like anybody else that has acquired at the trading deadline, you come into a situation where your new team has a chance to get to the postseason. You want to impress. Your new teammates, the new city, the fans. It's been a slow go so far, but really good tonight. He's scattered just a couple of hits. Even Omar went through that when he came over. Yeah, his uh, first 17 at bats, Omar had only two hits, and he didn't look good swinging the bat. But he has settled in nicely. Two and two. Echeverria waiting on deck. Swing and a miss. Sanchez a strikeout. That's his second. Here's our Bernstein scouting report tonight. Get the Bernstein advantage. We go to bat for you. Here's what the Jays have done with Jose Bautista and without. And these numbers should not surprise you. Ten games under 500 with him, without him. And the batting average is down, runs per game. Team slugging percentage also down without Bautista, their all-star. They're going to get him back shortly. He's on a rehab assignment as we speak. They're hoping maybe this weekend. Big swing there by Echeverria. 0 oh 2. Swing and a miss. And an easy 1 2 3 inning for Hannibal Sanchez. Three strikeouts in the game now for Hannibal. And we'll go to the bottom of the fifth of the ballpark. It's still 1 0 Detroit.
of one to nothing. There is Rod Allen's private boat getting ready to take him to his private island after the game is over. I wish. <laughs> Maybe one of these days, though. Do you know what they say? Dream big. <laughs> you never know. Dream big. Dream big is right. Well, the Tigers trying to add to their lead. It's up, or they are up one nothing as we go to the bottom of the fifth on a spectacular night here in Detroit. Temperature still in the mid 70s is perfect. Aaron Laffey back to the hill. And Peralta grounds it foul to start things off the home half of the fifth. Peralta Young and Dirks. Johnny 0 for 1, a bounce out back in the second. Laffey's 0 1. One ball, one strike. There have been only three hits in this game two for the Blue Jays and one for the Tigers. That was a triple by Infante, and he scored on a wild pitch for the game's only run. Johnny takes Hine away. Two and one. So these two would have been teammates in their Cleveland days, for sure. Laffey and Peralta. Here's the 2 1. High, three balls, one strike. Here's where Johnny can't be too aggressive. If he does get the fastball here, it's probably going to be away from him. And if you're Peralta, you can't be pull happy. Well, simply take it right back up the gut or to right center field. High, towering fly ball to left. Rajay Davis is under it. He nestles into his glove. One gone. How about some trivia tonight? The AT&T trivia question. What is it tonight? We have which pitcher got the win for the USA in the 2000 Olympic gold medal game against Cuba. Now again earlier tonight we had Jordan Weaver throw out the first pitch the US Olympian in gymnastics. So we thought we'd ask a Question concerning the Olympics back in 2000, U.S. won the gold. Who was the winning pitcher? And you know the answer to that question because I heard you uh, say it earlier. Yeah, I do. A good question, though. It makes you think. You got to go back to 2000. We're looking at the box score, and uh, there weren't really too many huge names that were uh, dotting the gold medal team for the U.S. But plenty of big leaders. One ball, one strike, and Delman Young. Big leaguers at the time or big leaguers now? Yes, at the time. One was a former Tiger. It was the 1 1, Adam Everett. There's a line drive to right, slicing, and it's going to go up against the wall. Dalvin's going to hold, though, with a single. Told you earlier that uh, several of the Tigers in the game today have not been willing to do what Dalvin just did right there, and that's basically think about driving the ball the other way. And then accomplish driving the ball the other way. The majority of the outs that Laffey have gotten today have been on the ground, short or third, or pop ups to left field. How about the arm strength out in right field by Sierra? Pretty I, impressive. I thought Ghosts could throw. So the Tigers have their second hit. It's a 35th knock uh, the opposite way for Delman uh, this season. That also extends his hitting streak to eight consecutive. Tori Alba able to dig that one out of the dirt, or at least stop it. One and zero on Dirks. And he had a base on balls back in the third. Three thirty-three since coming off the disabled list, in which he missed about two months. Runner goes in a slow roller hit towards second. And they get the out at first as Johnson throws him out. And Jim put the hit and run on right there. Uh, with the left hander laughing. Uh, being on the mound and trying to prevent the Tigers from hitting into another, another double play. As a manager you probably get to that point don't you when you start hitting into a, a ton of double plays. Well you talked about the fact in the Baltimore series they hit into six. Uh, they hit into a few of those last night and already. Uh, today they have hit it to a double play. 
two of them today. So put a man in scoring position. Here is Jeff Baker who bounced into one of those double plays back in the third. Baker looks at ball one. Tori Alva held it out there. Well, runners in scoring position in the last four games. The Tigers are four for 35. The 1 0 is outside, 2 0. Well, with the base open here, and the left handed uh, Alex Avila standing in the on deck circle. I don't think that the laugh is going to give Baker a whole lot to hit. Avila struck out his first time up. Baker waiting on a 2 0. And that's high. Three balls, no strikes. So Baker well ahead in the count. More than likely will be headed to first base, and we'll see what Avila will be able to do. Laffey walked a runner in the third. He walked one in the fourth. And if you're Vila, uh, you pretty much know that you're going to get a chance to hit in this inning with a runner in scoring position. Strike call, three and one. Each team with two hits, low scoring affair so far. One nothing Detroit in the fifth. Now it's three and two on Baker. One out single by Delvin Young. He advances to second on a ground out by Andy Dirks. Infante's triple set up a Tigers run back in the fourth. Here's the 3 2. Slice to the right side. Out of the reach of Johnson. Here comes Delman around third. They send him home and he scores. A bad throw by Sierra. And to second base goes Baker. Bad decision there by Laffey to pitch to Baker. Well, it looked like. When the count was 3 0, he was just going to put him on. And then he came back with a breaking ball, then a cut fastball for a strike, and then he tried to backdoor him with another cut fastball, but he got too much plate, and Baker able to drive a run in. Meanwhile, the throw from the right fielder, Sierra, gets away, and Baker will take second. And now Avila will step in. Fourth RBI with the Tigers for Baker. Young comes around to score. 2 0 Detroit. Avila sends a ground ball to the right side. Deep at first. Cooper will shovel toss to the pitcher covering. And the inning is over. Tigers get a two out run though. Baker drives one in.
Toronto Blue Jays, and he had not fared all that well. But today, mixing in all his pitches and locating them all in an area where they can't get to him, whether it be the fastball, the changeup, or the slider, Anibal has kept the ball out of the middle of the plate. Therefore, he's gotten some weak ground balls and some weakly hit pop-ups to the outfield. He looks awfully good here today. After the Tigers skipped him his last turn in the rotation, he's had eight days rest in between this start and his last start. So Anibal with five innings, two hits, no runs. He has struck out three. And as we go to the sixth inning, he'll face the top of the lineup. Rajay Davis, Colby Rasmus, and then Edwin Encarnacion. <laughs> My <laughs> goodness. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> That's nice. Oh, yeah. That's one way to put it. That's nice. The artwork's actually incredible. Flattering, no. But the artwork is really, really good. One ball, no strikes on Rajay Davis. Outside, two balls, no strikes. They are caricatures, so we'll give them uh, serious points for that. Very well done. They put some effort into that sign. Yes, they did. A lot of effort. 2 0 is low, 3 0 now. Well, you got to keep this guy off the base pass because once you let him on, it's an automatic double. And he's on. Lead off walk to the studio. We go for a game break. Here's Trevor Thompson. <laughs> All right, Trev, thank you. Well, the Angels are coming to town next. Should be an entertaining series over the weekend. Here is Colby Rasmus. Ooh, he was started and then he put on the brakes, and Davis just simply turned around and headed back to the bag. He will not stay there very long. Uh, Davis is one of those guys in the major leagues that everybody in the ballpark knows that he's going to steal, and most of the time, he's able to steal the base. Successfully. Tremendous speed. He gets a great jump. 38 swipes this year. Erasmus. Now down to the count 0 and 2. Very uncomfortable swing there by Erasmus. At an 86 mile per hour. Looked like a cut fastball there from Sanchez. And he's really been in a rough stretch. He is now 0 for his last 24. Here's the 0 2 runner goes. Good jump, swing and a miss. Throw it on a second tag, not in time. Erasmus out via the strikeout, and Davis steals a bag. Talked about how Encarnacion has been pitched very effectively to today uh, by Sanchez. Take a look at how he moved the ball around the first time up. Fastball in, then he goes fastball in again. Then he's going to go back in again, change up down, breaking ball down. Then he gets a pop up to the outfield. So just a very nice job of pitching to Encarnacion. And the last time up, just three pitches in the fourth inning, and he flied out once again. Meanwhile, Adabel Sanchez a moment ago tried to pick off throw to second and threw it into right center field. Watch well, this. And Davis didn't even notice it at the beginning. That missed the target by a wide margin. So Rajay Davis now at third base. Ball outside to Edwin Encarnacion. Here's the 1 0. A little bit outside. Two balls, no strikes. That stolen base, by the way, for Rajay Davis now ties him with Mike Trout for the American League lead. 39 steals. And ball three.
three missing outside to Encarnacion. Meanwhile, it looks like that Jeff Mathis has moved to the on deck circle. Well, you wonder if Cooper did something when he slipped, when he hit that uh, base hit off the right field wall, then he slipped trying to get back to first base. That yeah, good call. That may be the case. The 3 0 is hammered to left field on a line, and it'll get by Dirks. The run will score. He's on his way to second. The throw, not in time. Bounced in off the glove of Infante. Encarnacion swinging on 3 0, hit a rocket. It looked like uh, Sanchez was going to pitch around Encarnacion after falling behind him three balls and no strikes and a line drive right at Dirks. Took a couple of steps back and then he got in and couldn't make the shoestring grab. So the Jays are on the board. They've gotten the tying run to second base. Encarnacion is out there. Walk stolen base, bad pickoff throw. And a rocket off the bat of Encarnacion. So Math is pinch hitting, and it's ball one. One for four in last night's game. Mathis had a double. He pops it up. Foul ground. It's Avila. And Mathis is out. He's going to bring up Sierra. Still waiting on the ruling on that. Ball hit by Encarnacion. They're going to call it an error on Andy Dirks. E7. Which will make it two errors in this inning for Detroit. Sanchez facing Sierra. Fly out and a double. Big swing there, and he almost lost his footing. One and one on Moises Sierra. Breakout year last year at Double A in the Blue Jays system. Hit 18 home runs, knocked in 67. Swing and a miss. Contact here on the follow through. Ooh. Not nearly as bad as the one the other day. Here's the one two swing and a miss. Struck him out. So minimal damage done as Sierra strikes out. The Blue Jays get a run though. Top of the order coming up for Detroit.
Sports Detroit is brought to you by Bell Tire. Get the lowest tire price, period. Bell Tire. And by Toyota, brought to you by your Greater Detroit Toyota dealer. Gorgeous night here at the ballpark. Anibal Sanchez with a bounce back start here tonight. He's been really good. The Tigers leading it two to one. Hey, Chris Osgood in attendance here tonight. Part of a jam packed house here at the ballpark. Austin Jackson leads it on. AJ then Infante and Cabrera. Tori Alba moves from behind the plate to first base. Mathis stays in the game and catches. 2 0 the count. This is the first appearance in the big leagues for Tori Alba at first base. We'll see how this plays out. Or if it becomes an issue at all. He's only had one inning in the outfield. Never at first. The rest behind the plate. Here's the 3 0. And Jackson looks at a strike. Cooper jammed his neck, apparently. That's why he's out of the game. Here's the 3 1. Ooh, big swing there by Austin. Infante waiting on deck. 3 2 on Jackson. A strikeout and a ground out tonight for Austin. And he hits another ground ball to short. Bottle there by Echeverria. Forget about it. Lead off man is on. Once you bobble it, you're not going to have a chance to throw Jackson out. So the youngster unable to field it cleanly. Jackson is aboard to start things off. That'll bring up Infante. Let's see if the Tigers can take advantage of a miscue by the Toronto Blue Jays uh, infield. The Blue Jays were able to score their run last half inning on a couple of miscues. He pushes the butt down. Fonte will advance the runner. And one out. The Tigers conclude their series with the Toronto Blue Jays tomorrow with a 105 matinee. Tickets are still available. Call 866-66-TIGER or visit tigers.com. Justin Verlander will be on the mound tomorrow afternoon. Jay Happ will throw for Toronto. Ending the series. Cabrera is not going to hit. An intentional walk. The first base open. And Laffey will go after the lefty fielder. Should be the 12th intentional walk this year for Miguel Cabrera. So 12 times this season the opposing manager has decided they'd rather face fielder than Cabrera. There's ball three missing outside. And Prince going to get his chance to make him pay. There is ball four. Is four for eight following a Cabrera intentional walk. So he has done well in these situations. 309 batting average for the year. Prince bounced into a 4-6-3 double play back in the fourth. And most of the time when they do decide to walk Cabrera uh, to get to Prince, the left-handed pitcher uh, that is out on the mound. And Prince has been very unselfish in these situations. He will simply take that base hit 
the opposite way to drive the run in. Now, if you make a mistake inside, he'll look to do some damage. Yeah, but if you don't really want to give him anything to hit, he'll simply hit it right between short and third. Outside, 1-1. One, one. Laffey has reached 80 in the pitch uh, pitch total and his ratio not that good. One ball one strike. Let it go by for ball two. Here's what we're talking about in that ratio. 45 strikes 36 ball. Crowd's trying to make some noise now. Here's the 2 1. Little looper into left field, and Davis can't make the call to drop in base hit. Here comes the throw to the plate. There's a play, and he is safe. Well, they called him out, but he dropped the ball. Now they call him safe. They had Jackson, but he dropped the baseball. Prince Fielder is now five for nine after Cabrera intentional base on balls. Everything was away from him early in the count and then he's tried to go inside and we told you in those situations Prince not looking to do a whole lot of damage. He is simply trying to hit the ball in that direction. Jackson got fooled momentarily by the left fielder Davis who pretended like he was going to catch the ball and because of that Jackson started to slow down and had that math has been able to hold on to that ball. Jackson would have been out. Instead, it's a three to one lead now for the Tigers. And Fielder gets an RBI. Take a look at Davis in the outfield. Jackson doesn't quite know what he's going to do. He stops and then has to start up again. And Davis actually had the ball in his glove and before Jackson even got to third base. Here's Peralta. One ball, one strike. I think even though they called Jackson out, I think he was safe anyway. Even without the drop ball. 89 RBIs. Now for Prince. And Sanchez has a two run lead to work with, maybe more. Still only one out. Popped up foul back out of play. One and two. You mean you thought he was safe because his foot got in there? Yes. That's what I thought. Because Tom Hallion had called him out. Right, exactly. I mean, and emphatically, but I thought he was safe. I thought his foot got in there before the tag. But in the end it didn't matter because the ball was dropped. One and two. Missed it inside two and two the count. Jackson got bailed out a little bit by the inability of Mathis to make a play on that throw. Here's the 2 2. Bouncing ball left side. Echeverria goes over to make the play. Fires to second along the relay. Not in time. Nice pink down there by Tori Alba, a guy that's never played that position before. It was indeed a nice backhanded pick. Real nice range by their shortstop. Echeverria as well, just to get to that ball and then get it back to Johnson, the second baseman, and they almost turned their third double play of the game. Delman Young takes ball one. 
Tigers have scored one run in each of the last three innings. They lead three to one. Young hits a ground ball to third. Nice backhanded play by McCoy. And that is that for Detroit. However, they get another run. Prince drives one in to make it three to one. Celebrities on Sunday, August 26th at the Illich Charities One Team One Community Gala at the soundboard at the Motor City Casino Hotel. You'll enjoy food, music, and an exclusive silent auction for tickets. Call 313 471 6340. How about the comparison of the starters here tonight? Laffey has thrown 89, Sanchez has thrown 86. They've both gone six innings so far. And Annabelle has five strikeouts as he goes back to work here in the seventh. First pitch is in for a strike on your feet, Tori Alba. Missed it away. One ball and one strike. Prince Fielder knocking in a run. Getting the Tigers a little bit of breathing room. A little pop up. Shallow center. Got a drop. Base hit. The Tori Alba is aboard. Here's that AT&T trivia question again. You've had an opportunity to think about it. We've had that Olympic theme with Jordan Weaver throwing out the first pitch tonight. Which pitcher got the win for USA in the 2000 Olympic gold medal game against Cuba? Ben Sheets. Complete game, three hitter, and he struck out five. The answer to your trivia question tonight. It's a ball high to Kelly Johnson. Ben Sheets has resurfaced, resurfaced in Atlanta these days. He's pitched very well for them. Seven starts. He has had for Atlanta his ERA just a shade above three. Pretty amazing comeback for Sheets. Yeah, there was a time where Sheets was one of the uh, more dominant pitchers in the uh, National League. An outstanding breaking ball, good firm fastball, mid 90s. Just recently turned 34 years of age. Big swing there by Johnson. One and two on Kelly. We've seen quite a few swings like that today yeah, from the Toronto Blue Jays hitters, which is a Indication of how well Sanchez has moved the ball around here tonight. A couple of fly balls for Johnson, 0 for 2. He has at least one strikeout in 20 straight games. 21. Outstanding change piece there. 
Two gone or one gone with Tori Albert first. Six strikeouts now for Sanchez, all swinging. Here is Mike McCoy. Jays tonight have been limited to just three hits. Showing bunt ball one. McCoy's career has mostly been spent in the minor leagues, nine years worth in the minors before he got an opportunity to play in the major leagues. 2009 with Colorado. Runner goes in the air, foul down the right field line. Sanchez has gotten all the way up to 95 on several different occasions with his fastball. He has gone as low as 77 with his changeup. Uh, those readings always courtesy of Xfinity. Runner going again, bouncing ball hit to the right side. It'll get through into right field. Tori Alba is on his way to third. In standing up, and the Blue Jays have something going now here in the seventh. It's a 1 1 pitch with Tori Albel on the move, and you could see Infante vacate his position to go cover the bag, and there was nothing that Prince could do. And we bring up Echeverria. Danny tonight is 0 for 2, ground out, strikeout. Swing and a miss. On a play like that, Rod, what are typically the deciding factors on who will cover second base? Well, it depends on the hitter sometimes, whether it's a pool hitter or a guy that you think might go the other way. Also, how you think Sanchez may be pitching a particular hitter. As to some of the variables as deciding who covers the bag. One and one. And from a hitter standpoint, you really don't have time to determine uh, who you think is going to cover the bag and try to hit the ball right accordingly. Uh, that was just a thing of beauty there by McCoy. And obviously a very good call by John Farrell. Back to back hit and runs. One and one on Echeverria. Jays just two for ten tonight with runners on base. Runner goes. Here comes the throw down to second. Not going to be in time. That is now 104 stolen bases this year for the Toronto Blue Jays. They are not afraid to take off. Avila had no shot at throwing McCoy out here. So the Blue Jays have set themselves up now to try and tie this game with a base hit. McCoy gets his first of the year. Anibal gave up a run in the sixth. His teammates have gotten him three tonight. Step out. Two and one the count on Danny Echeverria. Blue Jays signed him to a four year deal back in 2010. Here's the 2 1. Off the end of the bat, 2 and 2. Sanchez has recorded six strikeouts. He has now reached 100 in the pitch count. 
Villarreal still warming up. Phil Coke still warming up. Game of cat and mouse going on here as uh, Sanchez not on the same page with Avila, so Alex comes out to the mound. Lead off single by Tori Alva, one out later, a base hit by McCoy. He has stolen second base. Laffy hoping that his offense can come alive. A drive in the air to right center field. Jackson on the run. So is Baker. Baker goes just about to the warning track. Both runners tag in advance. It's a sack fly and an RBI and a three to two ball game. Echeverria gets his second RBI. As Tori Alba comes in. Here comes Jim Leland. So the skipper will be going to the bullpen. Brian Virial coming in as the Tigers go to the pen. It's brought to you by Wallside Windows. We'll be back. Our score, but a much better effort tonight for Anibal Sanchez here tonight against the Blue Jays. Six and two thirds, six Ks. And he is still responsible for the man at third base. And the new pitcher now is Brian Villarreal. Yeah, Villarreal has had a very nice year. A 229 ERA, 51 strikeouts, giving up 28 hits in just over 39 innings. He needs to do a little bit better job as far as the inherited runners are concerned, though. So, with two outs, McCoy, the tying run is at third base. Rajay Davis, the batter. And it's in there for strike one. 98. Davis walked, stole a base, scored a run back in the sixth. It was the first Toronto run of the night. Here's the 0-1. Bouncing ball, second base side, and Fonte surrounds it. And Villarreal gets it done. So Sanchez's numbers are done for the night. And right now he has a 3-2 lead.
Detroit Tigers McDonald's player of the game presented by the quarter pounder with cheese using your cell phone text Tigers followed by a space and the player's uniform number to three seven three three eight or phone online at FoxSportsDetroit.com. Here come the Tigers now in the bottom of the seventh three to two ball game Dirks will lead things off against Laffey. And he drops down a punt, third base side, and no chance. But single for Andy Dirks. That's a great job by Dirks. And it's something that we have not seen Dirks do a lot of since he's put on the Detroit Tigers uh, major league uniform. Real good technique. Uh, Dirks does not have good numbers against left handers, so he simply bunts down the third baseline. And by the time McCoy gets in, he's able to pick it up, but he did not get a good handle on it. And a really good decision by Andy Dirks. That's going to be it for Laffey. So the leadoff man is on. Here Laffey is done. We will step aside. Another pitching change in a three to two ball game. Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Light. Tigers right now trying to extend their lead. They're up by one. And a new pitcher on now for the Blue Jays. Steve Delabar is in. Steve's had a very good year. Take a look at those uh, bottom notes. The left handers hitting 139 against him. Righties have not fared much better at just 206. And he has already been in 44 games. This is number 45. Here tonight for Delabar. Meanwhile, Quentin Berry is going to pinch hit for Baker. He'll be up there bunting you know, the runner in the scoring position. Or Jim might give him one swing and then put the bunt sign on. They're in tight at third base defensively. Don Wakamatsu who handles the running game for John Farrell his bench coach he called for the throw over there just to see if Barry would tip whether he was bunting or not it appeared that Barry is bunting. And it's butted foul back to the screen can't stab at it though Barry's a real good bunner but once you get the bat out in front of home plate you have to leave it out there you can't stab at it. Don Wakamatsu taking a look at Dirks and then going over a series of signs. Wakamatsu, a former big league catcher. 0 oh 2. So, very not successful in his first two attempts. Will he do it again? Let's see what Jim decides here.
swinging away and he takes a ball outside one ball and two strikes. Last night uh, Quentin uh, got in that bat and he did get the sack bunt down and he was fired up when he got down to first base and then when he got back to the dugout his teammates were fired up with the Q clap. And some major high fives too. Here's the one two swing and a miss. He chased one out of the zone and Quentin is out of there one gone. It's going to bring up Alex Avila. Avila 0 for 2 in his two at bats against Laffey. Alex now hitting 250. It's a 3 to 2 ball game. We're in the seventh. One. Got a little bit of shift on against Alex as well. Not quite as severe as the one they throw up there against Prince, but still way off the bag at third. And that one missed outside. Delabar's journey to the big leagues has been a little bit intriguing. He was pitching an independent baseball back in 08 and 09. Then he broke his elbow in 2010. Did not pitch at all that year. Seattle signed him as a free agent and he got to the big leagues with Seattle last season. One year removed from independent baseball. Swing and a miss, two and one. A 93 mile per hour fastball right down the middle uh, that Avila couldn't catch up to. Time called. Avila stepped out. No pitch. I remember uh, Shannon Hogan and also, of course, us uh, telling that story last year regarding. Uh, Delaborn, I believe he was working at the supermarket. Is that the same guy? That's the same guy. And it's really quite a story. Joaquin starting to heat up. Getting ready for the eighth. Swing and a miss. Good pitch there. You throw 95 miles an hour, you get a hitter uh, like Avila. In a 2 1 count where you know he's sitting on the fastball and you've already thrown one fastball by him. So you come back with a real good change and Avila was out in front and full. And he missed it low. Fill the count now. Three balls, two strikes. One out, more than likely, Dirks will be on the move here. Dirk's got things started with a bunt single. Barry struck out in a pinch hitting roll. Runner goes. Grounded foul. Three two change up from Delabar that Avila just got a piece of. Full count. <laughs> Laffey started, gave up the bun single to Dirks here in the seventh, and now Delabar has come on. If you're Dirk, you need to be trying to get a good jump here. Just in case Avila strikes out. Mathis is a good thrower. 
And you want to get the best possible jump you can get if you're still running. He is. And it's fouled away. So many times you get that base runner over at first base, and, and just because the count is three and two and you're running, you don't try to get a great jump because you're not thinking about stealing the base. But against a right handed pitcher that does not appear to have a great move, Dirks needs to get a good jump. And an important runner at first base right now in a one run game. Jay's got one in the top of the seventh to tighten it up. Runner goes again and again is fouled back out of play. Oh, a U turn for Andy Dirks. He'll do it again. Each team with five hits in this game. There's a throw back. Dirks gets in there. About to be the ninth pitch in this at bat coming up. <laughs> Dirk's getting his wind sprints in too. There he goes again. And another foul back out of play. Delabar has gotten all the way up to 96 with his fastball. The last couple, the eighth and ninth pitches of this at bat, both real firm at 94. So here comes pitch number 10. And he missed it high, ball four. Well, the Tigers now have something brewing here. Runners at first and second and one out. Top of the order coming up as well. There's the Farmers Insurance report card here tonight. Tigers offense in the month of August has been awfully good. 297, which leads all American League teams. And that's coming off of having a really good July as well from an offensive standpoint. Here's one of the big reasons why. Oh, he's right in the middle of everything. Here's Jackson with two on. And it's in there, strike one. Austin reaching out an error by Hechevarria in the sixth inning, and the Tigers took advantage of that error. They scored a run. Dirks and Avila, the base runners, run the seventh. Three to two, Detroit. Rounded foul, now it's 0 2. They got good arms in their outfield. Davis can throw from left. Rasmus, a good arm as well. In center field, and the kid Sierra also has a good throwing arm in right. And the 0-2. Swinging a tip into the glove for strike three. Jackson is out. Belivar gets a strikeout. His second since coming on. Two gone. That's going to take a hit from Infante. He's going to have to try something different than that fastball. Infante can hit that 95 mile power fastball. Fonte had a triple score to run, and then he sacrificed a runner up in the sixth. Fouled back out of play, gave him the fastball, and it's sent back into the seats on one. Tigers have four singles and a triple tonight. The Blue Jays have four singles and a double. Here's the 0 1. Swing and a miss. Threw a wrinkle in that one.
fastball mid 90s comes back with a breaking ball 86. Oh and two on Infante. And the 0-2. Bouncing ball foul. Third base side. Tigers got one in the fourth, one in the fifth, one in the sixth. Benoit. Heating up for what should be an appearance in the eighth. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. So the Tigers threatened but unable to score. You're watching Tigers baseball tonight, presented by Bell Tire. And to get you caught up if you missed it this is how the Tigers were able to get a big run in the sixth inning well they made the right decision the left-hander Laffey putting Cabrera on via the intentional base on balls but Prince Fielder takes a fastball that's inside and simply muscles it in the left field and Jackson running from second base able to come home and score and that scored the Tigers third run of the game which right now is the difference Tiger pitching 13th time in club history that they've recorded 1,000 strikeouts in a season. They cross that plateau tonight. Good outing for Adibal Sanchez and Infante nine extra base hits in his last 21 games had a big triple in this one here tonight. And as we go to the eighth inning Joaquin Benoit will take over and Benoit 54 and a third innings uh, so far pitched this year 16 walks 61 strikeouts in opponents. Are hitting just 215 against him. So the Jays will send Colby Rasmus to the plate here in the eighth inning. And Benoit is going to have to deal with Rasmus and then Encarnacion and then Mathis. They are due up. Rasmus is 0 for 3. Benoit came in and threw a grand total of one pitch in last night's game. Barry stays in the contest. He'll play in left, and Dirks will shift over to right field with Baker out of the game. Benoit got Vizquel on a pop up to end the eighth last night. Swing and a miss. One and one. So Rasmus now with his 0 for 3 is 0 for his last 25. Here is Benoit's 1 1. Swing and a miss. 
By the way, did you get your chocolate bar? I did get my chocolate bar. Mickey York stopped in the booth yesterday, and friends of his, Jim and Debbie Kirby, own a confectionery up in Escanaba. They sent us some candy bars. They sure did. And they didn't last long once we let the crew loose on them. Ugh. You got to hide the stuff from the crew. You know that by now. <laughs> but thanks to Jim and Debbie Kirby for their generosity. Always welcome chocolate. Swing and a miss, and Rasmus continues to scuffle. It's his third strikeout tonight. Real nice change up here from Benoit. So Joaquin off to a good start here in the eighth. Encarnacion has 32 home runs this year. Only two of which have gone the opposite way. So if you're Benoit here and you got a one run lead, you can't let him pull the baseball. Make him hit it to center or make him hit it to Dirks in right field. One ball and no strikes. Carnacion has single. Not going to run back in the sixth inning. That dark slow. Two balls, no strikes. Encarnacion just one for four against Benoit with a single. If you throw him anything middle in, he's going to get a good swing at it. Get out on that corner. Good location. Outstanding pitch. Can't get any better than this. Two and one. Three balls in one strike. Encarnacion tried to become just the third Blue Jay to lead the team in hits, homers, RBIs, and walks. The only other two to do it, Carlos Delgado and Bautista did it last year. The 3 1. He walked him. That'll put the tying run aboard. Hey fans, you can follow the Tigers with the MLB.com at bat 12 for your iPhone, iPad, Android, and Windows Mobile. You can get live audio pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit Tigers.com for details. So here is Jeff Mathis who had to take over earlier in the game an injury to Cooper. Don't go to sleep with Edwin on first base. He will steal two. Encarnacion has 13 steals and he's only been caught three times. Which computes out to 81 percent for Encarnacion. Tying run at first base, one out here in the eighth. A little lolly bop pickoff throw there. And brought a smile to Prince's face. It for a strike. Almost half of Mathis' hits are for extra bases. Got 10 doubles, got seven homers. Mathis doubled in the ballgame last night. 
he has never really hit for average. In fact, his average sub 200 in his years with the Angels. But he has some pop. Three to two ball game here. Tigers leading the Jays. White Sox lead the Yankees one nothing. They're in the fifth. Sox came in tonight leading the Tigers in the central by two. Here's the one one. Bounce foul one and two the count. Benoit takes over for Villarreal. Brian came on in the seventh inning. The Jays had the tying run aboard, and he got Rajay Davis to ground out. So it's in the hands of the bullpen tonight. Trying to save this one for Anibal Sanchez, who was good this evening. Swing and a miss. Mathis is out of there. Benoit has thrown some beautiful change-ups in this inning and has not missed with his location. Everything is south of the knees. You cannot get hurt with your change-up if you're locating it where he has been locating his in this inning. So here is Moises Sierra who doubled in his first at bat one for three. You gotta be careful with this guy here. He's got some pop in his bat. And it's in for a strike. Jose Valverde warming up in the Detroit bullpen with 24 saves this year. Came on in the ninth inning last night, got a little bit interesting, but in the end, struck out Encarnacion to end the game. Here's the 0 1. Checked it. Strike called 0 and 2 on Sierra. <laughs> Sierra hit a ball to the wall back in the fourth inning that Dirks had to go up there and make the play on. He's behind in the count 0 and 2. Missed it inside. One ball, two strikes. Benoit has thrown Sierra three straight changeups. Three straight changeups. If he wanted to throw a fastball right now, he could throw one, and I doubt very seriously whether Sierra would even get the bat off his shoulder. He would take strike three. He takes. Oh, oh, come on. <laughs> Man, you set him up and everything. God, <laughs> and he made a great. Come pitch. on, Tom Hallion. Oh, I'm going to give that to you. <laughs> but see, that just goes to show what young hitters do, though. He's up there looking for a changeup with two strikes. <laughs> was classic. Two and two. Runner going. Popped him up. Back a second. Infante can't get there. He'll get a run to third base as Encarnacion goes all the way. And the ball gets by Avila, but not far enough. However, to second base goes Sierra. Somebody's going to be given an error on that play. I don't know if they're going to give it to Dirk or if they're going to give it to Avila. Dirks will get it. Just out of the reach. A base hit for Sierra. And then Dirks gets the error.
Encarnacion kept going. Well, don't forget tomorrow it's the final game of the series. And here is the upcoming matchup presented by the Michigan Office of Highway Safety. Jay Happ and Justin Verlander will get together. And Happ checks in with a two and one record, ERA over five with the Blue Jays. And Verlander has 12 wins, seven losses, 180 strikeouts. So not only is the tying run at third now, the go ahead run is at second, and that's the pinch runner, Anthony Ghost. And here is your Vittori Alba. And he looks at ball one. Boy, that pitch that Benoit appeared to thread the needle with that 96 mile an hour fastball would have ended the inning. But it's still alive. And the 1 0. Fouled off. One ball, one strike. Blue Jays just one for six with men in scoring position tonight. Torrealba single and a walk. And the one one. In the air, center field. Jackson going back to end the inning. They threaten but do not score. We are headed to the bottom of the eighth inning. Tigers lead it by a run. Prince Fielder already has an RBI tonight. The Prince due up second in the bottom of the eighth. Still leading by a run. Three to two is our score. We got a new pitcher on now for the Toronto Blue Jays. Casey Jansen will come in. And Jansen throws a lot of strikes. He has 48 strikeouts, 47 and two thirds innings against seven walks. Lefties at 172, right handers just at 200, but he is always around the dish. And he'll face Cabrera fielder Peralta. First pitch is hammered back out of play 0 1. Rara tonight. Two walks, one intentional. Jansen replacing Delabar. High fly ball. Ghosts in right field coming in. 
One out. Jay's done a pretty good job of containing Cabrera in this series. He's going to bring up Fielder. Tigers were out hit last night and they won the ball game. Tonight they're out hit again. And they are winning this game. Fielder looks at a ball outside. Prince had a base hit to knock in a run back in the sixth. 89 RBIs for Fielder. That missed inside. Seventh inning or later. And Miguel Cabrera at 331 and Prince not far behind. At 328. Edwin and Carnacion. Uh, their designated hitter, the Blue Jays, has also done a lot of quality work seventh inning or later. Meanwhile, it's 3 0 on Fielder. Jansen's been with the Blue Jays his entire big league career. It started back in 2006. 55 appearances out of their bullpen last year, pitched extremely well. And that's in there a strike, three and one. Peralta waiting on deck. And he walked it. One out base on ball. You know the drill by now. As soon as this game ends, our coverage will continue with Tigers Live. You will hear from Jim Leland and you'll hear from the players. Plus, we'll break the game down, show you all the highlights. Tigers Live immediately after the game here on Fox Sports Detroit. Five walks tonight for Toronto pitching. They had nine in last night's ball game. It's a whole lot of base on balls. One of them intentional tonight. Peralta looks at ball one. Now the 1 0. Line drive foul. And skitter back into the seats. One ball, one strike on Johnny Peralta. 0 for 3 this evening. Jansen just looks like he can't wait to throw the pitch. He rocks back and forth. Typically, when there's nobody on base, I'm waiting for him to start talking to the baseball. <laughs> Here's the 1 1. Missed inside. Two balls, one strike. Fidgety, I guess, the best way to describe it. Right. Big deep breaths. Here's the 2 1. Foul tip at home plate. Two balls, two strikes. Series finale happening tomorrow afternoon here. Day baseball, Verlander on the hill. You don't want to miss it. And then the Angels come in for the weekend. Grounded foul just outside of the bag at third. Chad Fairchild had a real good look at it. Yeah, that much is for sure. And he made the call right away. Good call. Yeah, the perfect view of it. Oh. 
Still two. But Peralta very nearly threaded one down the third base line. Tigers have only five hits in this game, yet they lead three to two as we play in the bottom of the eighth. Again, the 2 2. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Peralta's out of there. He's going to bring up Delman Young. Breaking ball, swing and a miss. Single for Delman back in the fifth, extending his hitting streak to eight straight. Eventually came around to score a run. Papa Grande is getting ready to come in and hopefully close it out. And scattered foul down the right field line. No balls, two strikes. Tigers got one in the fourth, one in the fifth, one in the sixth. They lead by the slimmest of margins. Swing and a miss. Delman is out. So are the Tigers as Jansen strikes out a pair. Valverde coming in as we go to the ninth. Over Detroit in the Central, the Tigers holding on to a one run lead here as we go to the top of the ninth inning. Last call time for the Blue Jays. And for the Tigers, their closer is on now, Jose Valverde. The 53rd game this year that uh, Jose has been in. He has 24 saves and 28 chances. Opponents are hitting 219 against uh, Valverde. He'll be going against the bottom of the Blue Jays order as well. And really not too many options right now for John Farrell. All they have left on the bench is Omar Vizquel. And the bottom three coming up. Against Valverde. So we'll see if he can protect this one run lead. Kelly Johnson who is hitting just 179 since the all star break will lead things off. He is 0 for 3 in this game.
Johnson McCoy Echeverria. Showing bunts. Ball one. Valverde had a pretty good fork ball in last night's game, and he threw quite a few in the game. Of the 21 pitches that he threw, about half of those were fork balls. Lifted back out of play. One ball, one strike. Well, Kelly Johnson has now struck out at least once in 21 consecutive games. That's Adam Dunn territory. It is. And, and when you total them up, 29 total strikeouts in his last 21 games. Valverde would like another one. Here's the 1 1. Now one and two on Johnson. There is Vizquel, their lone bench player remaining. Here's the one two pitch. Drilled to right field on a line and caught by Andy Dirks. He's playing deeply out there in right, came in to make the play. That was a nice piece of hitting there by Johnson. That ball he picked up off his shoe tops and he hit a seed to right field. Look at where this was located. Tigers playing no doubles depth, which means. And Jim Leland had all of his outfielders playing very deep. He did not want anything hit over their heads. Here's Mike McCoy with one out. In there, strike one on McCoy. And if you take a look at where Cabrera is playing now, uh, Cabrera hugging that third baseline, he's not going to let McCoy uh, hit anything down that third baseline for a double. Almost standing on the bag. He is. The 0 1 popped up. Right side of the infield. Omar. Two gone. Well, just after Jeter and Homer to tie the game, Rios goes deep to give Chicago the lead again, two to one in the sixth. White Sox not going anywhere. It's going to be fun down the stretch. It's going to be a lot of fun. So here's Vizquel to pinch hit for Echeverria. Crowd to its feet. Scal looks at ball one. Blue Jays have lost six of their last seven games, been ravaged by injuries. They're down to their final out here tonight. And they are staring at Justin Verlander for tomorrow. Here's the 1 0. 2 0 on Omar Duskell. JV will get the call tomorrow afternoon. We'll be on the air tomorrow at 12 30. That's when Tigers Live will kick off. Followed by the game at 1. Here's the 2 0. Strike called on Vizquel. 2 and 1. Trying to get to Rajay Davis. Papa Grande in the ballgame last night. 
Hit a batter, gave up a double, but eventually nailed it shut. Popped up foul. And heading back to the seats. Out of play. Two and two on Omar Vizquel. It is getting loud in here tonight. One more strike. They want to see Valverde do his dance. And a soft liner to left, a base hit. Boy, the skill. He just served that out there, didn't he? Gets it done with the soft serve to left, and now the Jays will bring the top of the lineup coming up. He barely swung at this, just trying to make contact, and he does. And it lands softly in left field. So they're still alive. And Rajay Davis, who is 0 for 3 with a walk, a steal, and a run scored standing in. Davis up there with a tying run at first base. Fiscal. Side and Davis spins out to his knees. He hit Davis last night, didn't he? He sure did. That was after the double by Matt, the start of the inning. Oh, he almost did it again. This was last night. He barely got him last night. Nice acting job there by Davis. Runner goes. He was stumbling. Here comes the throw to second. That's how we end the ball game. A stumbling start for Vizquel and he's thrown out by Avila. Tigers will take it. The Blue Jays, one of your more aggressive base running teams in the American League, and Vizquel trying to get himself down in the scoring position. Outstanding exchange and throw by Avila right in the glove to Infante and Infante applies the tag to the hand and then to the face of this kill. Yes, indeed. Jose Valverde gets the save. That is his 100th as a Detroit Tiger. Congratulations, Papa Grande. So milestone night. For Papa Grande gets a little help from Alex Avila, who throws out this skill to end the ball game. Tigers win it tonight, three to two. Back with a whole lot more.